this is Josh White with JW Math Tutoring. Today's video is going to focus on an introduction to Desmos and how to use it for the digital SAT math section. So let's go ahead and get started. But life is a dream the calculus could never predict. Welcome to the introduction section of my ultimate Desmos guide for the digital SAT math section. So in this video, I'm basically going to go through uh, how Desmos is set up, basic information on how to use it. And this is essentially for people who have never used Desmos before at all, or have a very limited or basic background knowledge of it. So if you are familiar with Desmos, you already know how to do things in it, like uh, graph lines and points and, you know, find intersections of lines and all those kind of things, then you can skip this video and move on uh, <clears throat> to the later parts, um, you know, of this guide. Basically move on to the actual, you know, operations um, and watch the, you know, and watch those videos. So in any case, this is just meant to be a basic introduction, again, for those who have almost no familiarity with uh, Desmos. All right, so first thing I'm going to mention is, uh, and you probably can't read it here, uh, the actual website I'm at, but it'll be linked in the description of the video. I'll also uh, put it up on the screen here uh, when I edit this video. This is a specific address for uh, basically a version of Desmos that is identical to the version that appears in the Blue Book app. Okay? It is not the same as uh, desmos.com slash calculator. That version of the website or the graphing calculator has additional features that you will not find in this College Board, you know, PSAT, SAT version of it. Okay, so just be aware, uh, this specific version is the one that is supposed to mirror the one in Blue Book. Pretty much, uh, from my, my, you know, practicing around in Blue Book, every, all the functionality is the same, except on the website here, you can type something and then copy and paste it with the mouse, you know, using the keyboard but you cannot do that in uh, Blue Book, okay? So that's the only difference I've found between uh, this website version and the actual uh, Blue Book version. All right, so with that being said, let's just talk about some basic things that we can already see here on the screen. So you see this wrench over here, up right hand corner, if you click it, there's a bunch of different things here. You can make the, you know, basically size larger or back to normal. You can also do, you know, reverse contrast here, dark and light. Um, <clears throat> you know, you can do stuff like turn off the grids and, and so on. You can add arrows at the top, not really necessary. You can change the values that are, you know, the that are displayed here in the viewing window for both the X and the Y axis. Um, but that's most likely when you're doing a problem, you're going to, you know, zoom in, zoom out. So that's just going to happen automatically. Down here. You just want to keep this at linear. Do not, you know, you don't want to change that to uh, logarithmic. And then the most important thing also on this uh, graph, on this wrench, you know, graph settings page is switching between radians and degrees. So if you need to do a problem in one unit versus the other, you would just come here and make sure you're in the appropriate unit, whether it's radians or degrees. You know, you can just click select the one that you're in, and so on. <clears throat> Okay, then notice right below here you have a plus and minus. This is to zoom in and zoom out on your graph. So notice you can zoom in and then you can also zoom out. But if you want to go back to the default standard view, just click the home button right here. Okay, and now we're back to again kind of like the standard view that it starts off with before you've done anything. All right, a um, <clears throat> couple other things. You, you know, we see over here you've got this for an undo and then this thing for redo. So for example, if I started typing something in, you know, you can do undo each individual thing at a time, or you can redo. So if you, you know, erase something accidentally, or type something or whatever, you can just, you know, undo and redo here. You also have this plus key. Uh, this is where you can add an expression or a table. So adding expression doesn't really do anything. It just makes a blank row like we already have. However, if you want to add a table, you know, which we'll use to enter in points, you know, this is how you would do it, okay? And then you could type in your points here that you want to use, and notice they show up on the graph, and then with this table, we could do regressions, you know, we could do various things. 
of course you want to get rid of anything delete it we just you know click the x here um, with the gear function there are a couple different things you can do <clears throat> first of all if you have a bunch of uh, different things listed here you can just delete everything so for example just type you know whatever four different graphs here okay rather than having to click xxxx and get rid of all of them you can just click this and click delete all and they will all disappear okay other things that you can do so when you click this uh, there's some other different items other different options down here so there's create table if you click that that's going to automatically make a table here for this function and it has default x values but you can change them to whatever you want so if you want to evaluate a function let's say 30 notice it just automatically updates 50 i mean this is just y equals x you know so whatever the x is the y is going to be the same but you can type in whatever number you want here so this is a quick and easy way to evaluate a function um type in its x value and get its y value over here you also have duplicate so if you're trying to if you have a bunch of answer choices that are very similar except there's like one number or one you know plus sign or minus sign or one exponent or whatever that's different you don't have to retype them all you can just say type the first one right and then you could go ahead and duplicate and then we could make this one plus one you know what i'm saying and then we could duplicate and now for this one maybe like this thing up here is minus two you know what i'm saying so the point is you don't have to retype them all this is essentially like a you know how the how you would copy and paste you know from one line uh to the next instead of using control c and control v um because i mentioned earlier you cannot copy and paste using the keyboard uh in blue book you can here on this website, but again, you cannot do that in Blue Book. So in Blue Book, the way you have to do it is, again, going here and then clicking this. Um, <clears throat> of course, you can just click here, X to delete it, but that's no different than the X that you see here. Anyways, uh, this, of course, just like, you know, hides it to move it over to make the graph look bigger. Um, let's see what I want to talk about next. Oh, uh, let's go down here. Just gonna move this up a little bit so we can see the keyboard icon at the bottom here. Okay, so down here, if you bring this up, uh, you can see basically the keyboard. There's a bunch of, you know, obviously you've got your uh, number keys and you've got some letters. Most of these symbols, you can pretty much just type on your own, you know, for like an exponent thing, you just would type, you know, A and then you do the hold shift and hit six, you know, for the caret and then B. So the point is you don't have to use this button. Same thing with like the or equal to's, you can just type, you know, greater than equal to, it'll automatically type it. Um, you know, absolute values you can type. For square root, you can just do SQRT. It'll automatically make a square root. For pi, you know, you just do PI. It'll automatically turn it into pi. So you generally don't need these buttons down here. The only uh, thing you might need is functions. So again, all these like basic trig functions or inverse trig functions, you can just type these. You don't need to come to the menu. You know what I mean? You can type sine of whatever, 60. I think it's so in radians, not there. Sine of 60 degrees, right? Or you could type inverse sine of uh you know one half there we go 30 degrees so the point is you don't need to go to the function menu to access this uh there's a bunch of same again all these statistics things you can just type them all out you don't need to access here the one thing that you do that you may need to use that you would have to access in the function menu is this right here so let me just get rid of this <clears throat> so this is a root, but to a specific index. So not a square root, but let's say you wanted a cube root or a fourth root or a fifth root or whatever. Okay, that you would need to go to the function menu and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and then grab this, you know, from down here. Okay, uh, let's see the other things I want to talk about. So let's get into some basic now of graphing, right? So with graphing, you can just type the function itself. Okay, so there's our nice quadratic function. Notice that uh, there's a bunch of things that are highlighted or clickable points here. So you have the, in this case, it's the minimum value down here, the vertex of this that's highlighted. 
You have the two x-intercepts, i or across the x-axis, other known as the, otherwise known as the zeros or the roots. Those are both highlighted, and you also have the y-intercept, which is highlighted as well. And generally, any graph that you have, which has these points on it, are going to be highlighted and clickable. You know, with uh, with gray dots. So let me just show here a circle. Um, let's see, minus 20 equals, there we go, that works. Okay, so notice here you've got a bunch of uh, gray dots, okay? These are technically the x-intercepts. Notice these two right here, these are the y-intercepts. And then up here, these are the max and min. So it's only these two at the very top, basically the only two black points right now, these are the ones that are, say, on a circle, the endpoints of the diameter. These are the points that you end up using to measure the diameter if you want to find the radius of the circle. Or these are the two points you want to use if you want to find the center of a circle. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so just be aware, there'll be a bunch of points highlighted when you uh, do a graph. Now, for base, for like the first graph I did, you know, was a uh, parabola, quadratic function. Uh, you could just type it in as it is. Or you could also type x squared in front, you know, like this, like whether you, or sorry, y in front, y equals, not x squared in front, y equals. So notice I put y equals, it doesn't change the same graph. You can also uh, put f of x in front as well. And we're going to see here it's the exact same graph. Notice when you have multiple graphs, uh, you can highlight, <clears throat> you know, to take one on and off. Now, the red one's the bottom one. So if I go ahead and click it, nothing happens because the blue is already blocking it. You know what I'm saying? Now you can see I can turn the red on and off. So you can click on a graph to turn it on and off. Um, <clears throat> we won't get into this uh, right now, but just so you know, the reason why you would uh, type a function with f of x is because you may want to evaluate the function for a point, you know, like find f of 5 or f of negative 6. So that's why you would type f of x instead of y. Um, <clears throat> another thing to mention too, is that you can trace along the graph here, uh, but like depending on the function, you know, a lot of the points are not going to be exact. Some will, obviously, um, but you know, they only go out to three decimal places, so you don't know. Like this point right here, it's you know, one point six four six five point zero zero one. So we don't know exactly. Like you know, it's, you, you can see it's even tough to just stay on it because it's not a clickable point. We don't know exactly, you know, like this point, 1.459, 4.047. We don't know what the rest of the decimals are. We don't know if it actually does stop after those three or if it just continues going on. So that's just one thing to be aware of um, <clears throat> in terms of tracing along the graph. And there's much other, uh, there are many other better methods to get exact point values on a graph for a given X or given Y. And again, those will be later. Those will be in, you know, once we get into the actual skills and operations. However, if you do zoom in, so let me zoom in pretty far up here, like where I was before. Notice if I do zoom in, it does give me more decimal places. So like right here, the X has, X coordinate has four decimal places. Same thing with the Y. So you can get more specific, but again, it's still not going to give you uh, you're not going to know if it's the exact uh, value or not. Okay. Oh, another thing too, just to show you, um, another <clears throat> set of points that are typically highlighted or clickable will be intersection points. So like these right here, you know, these two points where these two graphs intersect, you can click on them and get the values. So that's another set of point besides your max and min values, your x-intercepts, your y-intercepts. Um, intersection points are another common uh, you know, point that's highlighted or clickable. Uh, let me see here. I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about in this video. One thing I will mention, and again, I'll, this, we'll get to the specifics of this again later, you know, upcoming video, but certain equations, let me see if I can get one here. So this one, <clears throat> okay, here we go. Perfect. I have an absolute value equation. Technically, I've typed this in. I've solved this. If you don't understand what's going on here, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But certain equations will not be clickable. So notice right here, 
I cannot click on these vertical lines. There's no point that it's highlighting for me. Like, And so I can zoom in. It looks like one of them is directly over one, but the other one I can't quite tell. So just realize certain times when you graph specific functions, usually it's related to solve an equation, you will not be able to click the x-intercepts. Um, usually it would only be the x-intercepts that you wouldn't be able to click, or maybe the intersection points um, as well, depending if we have something else. Let me see here. Yeah, see here, if I graph this um, horizontal line, like the the y-intercept, excuse me, is highlighted and clickable, but these intersection points with the black lines are not. Okay, like I can trace along them, but there's no actual clickable, highlightable point. So that's just one last thing uh, to be aware of or to keep in mind. So again, just to summarize, this was meant to be a brief uh, introduction to... Um, how to use uh, Desmos, or the, not really how to use it, but more uh, the basic kind of features of Desmos and kind of the settings behind it, um, <clears throat> things to be aware of in terms of like, you know, graphs and clickable points and highlighting things on and off and so forth. Uh, future parts of this guide, like I said, we'll get into the actual operations that you'll want to learn, like specifically what to type in, what types of problems you can solve in Desmos. Um, so check out the other videos, you know, in this series, it's basically going to be broken down into, you know, what I call core skills, and then intermediate skills, and then finally advanced skills. Okay, so it's starting with like kind of the basic things and then, you know, ones that are a uh, little more advanced than that. And then finally, you know, the most advanced, kind of the most uh, complicated. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please do give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe to my channel, sign up for notifications and check out the rest of this ultimate uh, Desmos guide to the digital SAT math.